As I push through the tower determined to confront your Rhino Boo, a complex mixture of thoughts and emotions swirls within me. I've come so far, seen so much, and been through countless trials since that fateful day with the biochip. It all boils down to this moment, facing Uranobu, the one who orchestrated the events that set this whole chain reaction in motion. My mind is focused, a cocktail of anger, apprehension, and a growing sense of inevitability. Be careful. I have heard there is fighting on this level. Yorinobu is the key to exposing the truth about Saburo Arsaka's death about the treacherous corporate games that led to so much destruction. But I can't help but wonder, even if I succeed in ending him, what then? Can I really trust Tanako to keep her word? She's a part of this power structure, a player in the very game that has manipulated and used me. The thought of ending Yorinobu, however justified it may be in the face of his deeds, weighs heavily on my conscience. It's not just a matter of vengeance, but also the responsibility of deciding who lives and who dies. There's a fine line between justice and becoming a mirror of the very darkness I'm fighting against. The possibility of Hanako betraying me looms large. I've been deceived before, used by different factions, and now with so much at stake, it's hard to shake the feeling that this could be yet another manipulation. I want to believe in the power of truth, the hope that exposing Yorinobu's actions could change the course of Arasaka and bring justice to those who suffered. But the deeper I get into this intricate web of power, the more I realize that my actions may only be a small ripple in a much larger tide of ambition and betrayal. It's a harsh reality, one that tempers my idealism with the stark realization that the world I'm navigating is not as simple as black and white. In the end, as I advance towards my confrontation with Yorinobu, I'm propelled forward by a stubborn determination, a desire to see this through, to uncover the truth, and to do whatever it takes to break free from the biochip's grip on my life. But in my heart, there's also a wariness, a nagging doubt that this may not truly be the end of my journey, that there might be more twists and turns, more sacrifices to be made before I can truly find my way out of this maze of power and deceit. As the elevator doors open and reveal Arasaka soldiers waiting for me, it's a stark reminder of the brutal reality of corporate power struggles. This entire building, this symbol of wealth and influence, is now a battlefield, and I'm right in the midst of it, but the loyal soldiers by my side. Standing with Hanukkah emphasized the gravity of this conflict. It's a clash of ambitions, egos, and family rivalries, all fought on the grand stage of Arasaka Tower. At the sound of gunfire, the flashes of energy weapons, and the constant danger bring a heightened sense of urgency. Every step, every move I make feels like a calculated risk, a dance between life and death. The close quarters combat adds an extra layer of tension, a raw, primal struggle for survival. It's a stark contrast to the polished corridors and pristine offices that once represented Arasaka's untouchable authority. It's got a problem. They've disabled all the elevators. Amidst this chaos, I can't help but reflect on the systemic nature of this conflict. The power vacuum left by Saburo Arasaka's death was inevitable given the sheer scale of his influence. His children, products of this cutthroat world, would naturally be a for control even if I had not been involved. The realization that Takemura and I may have simply accelerated this process is a bitter pill to swallow. It's also a stark reminder that the power and wealth amassed by these corporations have profound consequences. People's lives are treated as expendable pawns, sacrificed in the pursuit of dominance and control. It's an attack! In the twisted logic of these battles, collateral damage becomes an accepted norm, and it's sobering to see how easily human lives are cast aside in the name of power and legacy. Amidst this carnage, I can't forget the underlying objective, exposing the truth, not just for my sake, but for all those who suffered due to the machinations of the powerful. It's a fight that goes beyond the immediate bloodshed, a fight for accountability, justice, and the hope of a better future. As I fight through Yorinobu's forces, there's a determination burning within me. This confrontation is not just about personal vendettas. 
It's about unraveling the threads of deceit that run deep within our Asaka and reshaping the destiny of Night City and beyond. It's a fight that may not have started with me, but it's one I've been thrust into. And I'll do everything in my power to ensure that it leads to a resolution that makes this world a little less dark and a little more just. I've seen the desperation in Takamura's eyes. The sense of duty that led him to betray Arasaka and seek justice for Saburo Arasaka's victims. I've witnessed Tanako's calculated maneuvers, her willingness to engage in this fierce battle to secure her position and unravel the secrets of the corporation she's long been a part of. Amidst this turmoil, I wonder about her true intentions, whether she genuinely seeks to expose the truth or if she merely seeks to control it for her own gain. As I face off against Yorinobu's elite guards, I can't help but think about the countless lives that have been affected by the actions of this family. This corporation, the small personal stories of people who were caught in the crossfire, whose lives were forever altered by the relentless pursuit of power and wealth. It's a stark reminder that the consequences of the decisions made by those at the top ripple throughout the world affecting individuals who have little control over their own destiny. <laughs> Amidst the gunfire and the chaos, I also feel a growing sense of urgency. The biochip's effects on my mind have become more pronounced, and I know that my time is running out. The Omega blockers I took earlier might provide temporary relief, but they're just a band-aid solution. I'm on borrowed time, and the knowledge that my own consciousness may soon be overwritten by an artificial construct is a haunting thought. The clash between Arasaka factions rages on, and I press forward, focused on the task at hand. There's a sense of grim determination in the way I fight. A realization that this battle is about more than just survival. It's about revealing the truth, making sure that the sacrifices made along the way are not in vain. It's about shining a light on the dark corners of corporate power and holding those responsible accountable. In the end, I know that the answers I seek lie somewhere within Arasaka Tower. I must face Yorinobu, confront the man who has been at the center of this storm and see where the truth truly lies. Whatever the outcome, I can't afford to falter. The lockdown has been lifted. Be very careful. Your numbers men are certain to be in position. I will join you once we have the situation under control. The fate of Night City, the lives of those who've suffered, and perhaps even my own existence hangs in the balance. Two thousand sixty-seven. An Arasaka bodyguard shields the Emperor of Japan from an assassin's bullet. 2071. Arasaka security forces prevent mass riots in San Francisco, saving the city from certain ruin. 2074. An Arasaka investigation eliminates a terror cell in Rio de Janeiro, ending a stream of attacks and executing those responsible. You will receive Netrunner support soon. Arasaka's counterintelligence division effectively. <laughs> Guards are taken care of. There is a large room ahead. You I know what is most capable. My netrunners have dealt with the doors. You can keep moving.
they were gonna make this easy. Your meat is fed. Oh, fuck. As I desperately tried to escape the relentless pursuit of Atom Smasher, a wave of fear and frustration crashes over me. This monstrous cybernetic behemoth is a reminder of the sheer power that megacorporations like Arasaka wield, the extent to which they've advanced in merging man and machine. Every step he takes, every piece of metal that clashes against the floor sends a shiver down my spine. I'm firing shots using every bit of cover I can find, but it's clear that Smasher isn't going all out. He's toying with me, playing a sadistic game that seems designed to break not just my body, but also my spirit. His taunts cut through the chaos, a constant reminder of my vulnerability, of how insignificant I am in this grand scheme of corporate power. It's in this dire moment, my thoughts race. I'm not just battling against Smasher. I'm grappling with my own mortality, with the knowledge that the bioship within me is gradually erasing who I am. My own existence is at stake, and yet I'm caught in this deadly dance, dodging blows that could obliterate me in an instant. The sight of Smasher, this nearly invincible colossus, forces me to confront my place in this world. I've been a pawn, manipulated and used by forces beyond my control, and now I'm face to face with the ultimate embodiment of those forces. My choices, my actions, they've all led me to this point, and it's in this life or death struggle that I'm forced to reckon with the consequences of my decisions. I can feel the weight of my past, the friends I've lost, the lives I've disrupted, the secrets I've uncovered. They all converge in this moment as I evade Smasher's deadly grasp and fire back with everything I have. It's a fight for survival, but it's also a battle for something larger than myself. It's a chance to expose the corruption and darkness that festers within the heart of a Rasaka. At each breath, I draw strength from the memories of those I've lost, from the desire to make a difference in this chaotic world. As Smasher continues his relentless pursuit, I push forward knowing that the fate of Night City, the truth that needs to be revealed, rests on my shoulders. It's a daunting responsibility, but it's one I can't shy away from. No matter how formidable the enemy, I'll keep fighting until the very end. that, Johnny. <sighs> that was for you. As I stand amidst the wreckage surrounded by the aftermath of this fierce battle, the heavy machine gun clutched in my hands, I can't help but feel a mixture of relief and awe. Adam Smasher, that relentless cybernetic monstrosity, has finally been brought down and the echoes of his taunts and the fear he instilled begin to fade. The hallway, once a scene of desperate chaos, is now airily still. The flames and smoke creating a surreal atmosphere. I can't help but ponder the remnants of Smasher's humanity. If there was any left within that amalgamation of steel and circuitry, it's a question that lingers in the wake of our brutal confrontation. Perhaps it was the presence of his Enneagram, 
That fragment of consciousness that remained tethered to his memories and identity, that kept him from becoming a mindless cyber psycho. Or perhaps it was something deeper, some last vestige of humanity, that defied the cold calculations of his cybernetic enhancements. It's a haunting thought, one that lingers as I continue towards Yorinobu's office, the destination that's been at the heart of this chaotic journey.